like to thank everybody for this opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, this is a committee, but really it's an open forum. Uh, a lot of people felt that I wouldn't have the opportunity to speak to the New Bedford Democratic community. Uh, I am running for a seat currently held by John Saunders, who's a New Bedford native. So for the very least, no matter the outcome tonight or the outcome of the election, I am grateful to have this as an open forum and a real arena of ideas, and I, I am grateful for that. So thank you. Uh, my name is Frank Durant. I'm running for county commission, but my real goal is to really reform county government as we know it. A little bit about me, um, born and raised in Attleboro, Massachusetts, which is up north of northern uh, Bristol County. I served on the Attleboro City School Committee for four years. Uh, my wife and I moved to town of Norton right next door about two years ago, and we're planning to have our first baby this June. So I figured, uh, why not run for office since I'm having a baby soon? <laughs> so what is county government? And that's a question I get a lot when people say, oh, what are you running for? What is county government? County government's been around since 1685, almost 100 years before we even had a nation. And county governments around the whole country, it all depends where you're located, because there are some county governments in the Midwest that you can travel 500 miles and still not hit your capital city. County governments sometimes run the sheriff's department, uh, local libraries, county hospitals. Um, in the 1990s, Governor Weld really eliminated half of the county governments in Massachusetts. Anyone that had debt, had mismanagement, uh, Weld went right in there and decided just to take them over. A uh, little fun fact, which a lot of people don't know, is Bristol County government was supposed to be taken over in 1997. For one reason, the state could not afford the, the overhead for payroll. So for the idea of reforming, Bristol, government, Bristol County government's been kind of in a limbo for the last 20 years of what we actually see as the future. In 2010, the sheriff's office left the county government. And today, you're looking at uh, Bristol County government is involved with the overseers, landlords, for the county district court buildings. Uh, Register of Deed Buildings, and the Bristol Agricultural School, known as Bristol Aggie, which a lot of people don't know about. So that, in a nutshell, is county government. And why am I running? I have a four-point plan of representation, communication, fiscal development, and also a voice for the county. So this is the third time I've done this, and each time I usually speak for an hour. That's not going to happen tonight, Rich, so I'm just <laughs> going to get 10, 15 minutes at tops. So the first issue is representation. As you see, this is the map of Bristol County. Um, I can live right here in Norton. The center of the seat where the Superior Court building is right there in Taunton. And over here we have Battleship Cove, right where the bay is. And I bring that out to a point because the current three members of the County Commission is from Fairhaven, New Bedford, and Fall River. So you have a map of over half a million residents and all three members of the County Commission reside south of Route 79, Battleship Cove. Um, I feel it's an unfair seat of representation. Now, all three county commissions do represent the entire population. However, question for you, which of the territories of the now North, Central, and South, which area generates the most revenue? You would, you would assume New Bedford, or maybe Fall River. The North generates the most revenue. So register of deeds, you got a lot of lawyers going in there for issues with real estate and land. So Barry Blair, uh, Barry Amaral has done a terrific job up in the north. There's two locations for the register of deeds because there's a lot more business that's happening in Fall River New Bedford. The register of deeds are broken down from the north, central, and south. My recommendation is that we break up the county so one person represents the southern towns, the central, and one person represents the north. The reason I bring this up too is if you look at this beautiful building that was built in the 1800s, um, we had money from Deval Patrick. Deval Patrick set aside $3 billion for fiscal development. That money went away in the Baker administration. We had a million dollars for a five-year plan to see where the money should be spent. So right about now is where that five-year plan is actually going to be coming up. So the only advocate to rebuild this court is Mr. Senator Mark Pacheco, who had the money, and then we lost the money to the Baker administration. And just recently, uh, the money is now back. So hopefully the $30 million to repair uh, Bristol Aggie, and also I think the $12 million for this court buildings will get to Baker's desk and be signed. But for the longest time, you have had nobody in county government advocating up in Boston and trying to go get this funding. So I think if you had somebody representing the North, you would actually have somebody who would care about the Northern Territory. Number two is enhanced communication. Uh, if you have a chance on your phone or at home, check out the Bristol County website. It's a perfect website, website for 1998. And if you look at it, that's, that's currently the website where one issue I have is it hasn't been updated for 2018 meaning minutes have not been posted. I want to give the benefit of the doubt, but it's human nature. When you see nothing happening, you assume nothing's happening. But I want to give the benefit of the doubt because in transparent communication, everything that county government is supposed to do has to go to Bill Galvin's office. So I guarantee you they're doing their job where if they have minutes and notes, it's going to the Secretary of State's office. But transparency just doesn't go up. 
you communicate down, you communicate to all the masses left and right. And when you communicate to the masses, you need mass communication. We don't have a Facebook page. So I know the cool kids are on Facebook, but also you could reach out to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people within a minute on social media. And that's just as important, because if you look at this tale of two Pauls, you have Paul Hero, the Attleboro mayor, and Paul Feeney, our state senator, they're on Facebook every day. You want to know where your money's being spent, what your state representative is doing? Every day they post information, as opposed to, I want to know what happened in the recent vote for Bristol Aggie. Now, are you folks familiar that your taxes are going up because of the Bristol Aggie $104 million that just got passed? Anybody? There were two meetings. The first meeting was not properly held, so they had a second vote. There were less people in the room than there are here tonight that voted for a $104 million to go to the state to pay for the new Bristol Aggie. Bristol Aggie is a beautiful school. It's probably the best agricultural school in Massachusetts. Um, there's currently a classroom that takes place in a chicken coop with no heat. So built in the early 1900s, it's time to be renovated. I'm all for getting the $54 million, but at what cost? Durfee wants $200 million. Westport just voted for $100 million. Attleboro is voting next month for $200 million. We should all have brand new schools, but where are we getting the funding to pay for it? Let alone, it wasn't communicated. Minutes aren't even videotaped. Now, the videotape we're watching is not the official minutes of the meeting. That secretary has to have official minutes. However, there's no videotaping of the minutes. So when it comes to enhanced communication, there's a lot to be done by updating the website, adding social media, but also letting people know that, hey, you need to get a bond because New Bedford and Fall River have to pay a lot for that. Also, um, nobody was present for New Bedford or for River to take the vote. Uh, Gatehouse Media does control most of the news from New Bedford, Fall River to Taunton Gazette. And it said, oh, almost a unanimous vote. There were 20 people that were supposed to vote for the 20 cities and towns. 13 communities voted yes, five were absent, two voted no. Fall River wasn't there, New Bedford wasn't there, Westport wasn't there. So fiscal development. Um, I'm from the small town in Norton, and we had uh, solar power panels through a business deal with Wheaton College. It's probably maybe one-tenth the size of that. It generates $25,000 a year in found revenue. Little ideas of this, besides relying on local taxpayers to pay for the county budget, are great ideas. Uh, one idea I want to have is lowering the salary of the county commissioners. Now, I'm not going to ask if I get elected my other two commissioners to take a pay increase, uh, decrease, but I will, because you wondered how am I going to get a free new website, how are we going to make these investments. Uh, you have to ask the investments that the county commissioners are putting in. Granted, they're available 24-7, but does anybody know the hours they put in for the, minute, for the meetings? No. They meet twice a month, plus they also sit with the Bristol Aggie meetings, which are going to be one to two months. So on average, meetings about two hours. So Two times four, that's about eight hours a month that they're in meetings. Does anybody know what the salary for a county commissioner is? $35,000. Now, granted, I'm hoping that they're available 24-7. They're in the community. They're at the courthouse buildings. They're at the registered deeds. They're getting stuff done. They're overseers. They're landlords of the buildings. However, Superior Court building is falling apart. Your New Bedford building, paint's chipping, roof's leaking. They're landlords for these buildings, which are your court buildings, your register of deeds. So I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt that they're available 24-7, but if you're only working five to six to eight hours a month and you're making a full-time salary, my wife hates this idea, but I'll take a stipend, but it's not worth a full-time salary. Also, are you familiar that you have your own printing press here at the Register of Deeds building in New, in New Bedford? Okay. We, <laughs> I was assuming a few hands, but... Right, well, we have the county government owns their own printing press right down the street at the Registered Deeds Building. No, none of you knew that. Nope. Okay. My background is branding and marketing. It's mentioned on the website, but like I said, no one goes to the website. It costs $91,000 a year to have this printing press. It's a one-person operation. Now, if it was low cost in printing and every municipality used it, great investment, we can make a profit, but I just spoke to the New Bedford Democrats. Not a single person knew that we had a county-owned printing press. So when it comes to fiscal responsibilities, is it worth that $91,000 for a one-person employee to have that available? And this is the main reason why I'm running. I mentioned back in the timeline that the sheriff's office left in 2010. I'm a member of the Norton Democrats. I also served on the Atterbury Democrats. So many people came to me back in March of 2017 saying, who do I write a letter to complain about this guy? He wanted to build a, well, he does want to build this fictitious wall for the current fictitious president. <laughs> By using by using his, his prisoners, but also that's slave labor. So 
Some people agree with him. Some people, thank God, don't. But my big issue is only one elected official got up and said, you're wrong, and helped pass legislation to make that happen. New Bedford's Antonio Cabral. Right. Okay? Yeah. However, a lot of people, Democrat and Republican, who may disagree with him, it's politically smart not to give your opinion. And that's really dangerous to today's politicians. Whether you're a county commissioner, state rep, state senator, city councilor, you're electing these people to speak on your behalf. Whether they're right or wrong, everybody should have an opinion whether do you feel we should have this. Do you feel that the sheriff is doing his job? Do you feel that the sheriff's idea is, is realistic? County, uh, county commissioners did get together to say, we all support the South Coast Rail. Great. You may say, what does county commissioners have to do about mass transit. However, they all got together and they made a declaration saying, hey, we, we support the extension of the railroad tracks. So why didn't a single county commissioner say, I disagree with the county sheriff? So that is really the main motivation where we need leadership of people that are going to represent, make the hard decisions, and give their opinion. So my request tonight is, of course, I ask you for your vote. I ask you for your support. But I also ask that you invite my challenger here to speak on his own behalf to say, what has he done for the last four years and what's he going to do for four years to come? But also, there's a number four on that list. Uh, I want people talking about county government because there's so many people out there. Your tax dollars pay for this, and no one knows what it does. They've been so under the radar. I've been told this by people that work at the Secretary of State's office. I've talked to people that work for the county commission. It's a form of government that's under the radar, and you are funding it. So, like I said, I, I support any form of endorsement, whether it's from the committee or individuals. But the main goal is to get people talking, and hopefully I have your support come September. Thank uh, you. Quick, quick, who, I might have missed it when I yeah. went back there. Who's the current county commissioner? There are three. There's Paul Kitchen of Fairhaven, uh, former mayor of Fall River John Mitchell, and John Saunders of New Bedford. Aside from Bristol Aggie and... Um, well, there's really no nothing that you that you actually can do with your eight hours a month, and um, it's in terms of the sheriff. The sheriff's under the control of either the Department of Corrections or, when it comes to infrastructure and pensions, under the state. So, the county commissioners have absolutely no control over the sheriff. So. Um, how about you promise to get rid of county government ah. instead of reform it? Hmm. You are the, this is my 10th presentation and the 10th person asked me that question. Um, there are people that currently work for, county, for the county government. It, I would like to see it be reformed. I want to see it work for the people because it does bring local services to the community. There's that 300 plus year tradition, but you're right, is county government obsolete? Um, I would not eliminate it if I had to eliminate 30, 40, 50 jobs. However, if there's an opportunity to save the taxpayers money, have those jobs still here. Registered deeds building is still local, county employees are still local. However, it's being run by the Secretary of State's office. I would consider that after I really audit the budget and see what the future of county government could be. If I was king for the day, there's a lot of open space available. There's a lot of local nonprofits that there's room to rent out, bringing people into the Taunton buildings, registered deeds buildings, even down in New Bedford. There's a lot of opportunities to grow and keep county government, but that's the $5,000 question, well, is an obsolete form of government. Rhode Island hasn't had county government since 1842, mm -hmm. and um, Connecticut abolished county government uh, a number of years ago, mm -hmm. and um, they're doing just fine without counties. Yeah. No, it's a really good question. If you looked at Plymouth County, that's the idea I feel a county government should be run. If you look at their website, how they communicate and what they do for the community, you would say, that's no brainer. My taxes should, should afford that. But it comes down to 1997, we're looking at over 20 years of what are we doing with this form of government and what's the future. So hence, I'm Frank Durant, I'm running to reform county government, but that is the big question. Once you get in there, what changes can you make? Is it still an effective form of government worth having? So until I, until I look at the budget and see what the whole five-year, ten-year plan is, because it should have been a 20-year plan, and no one knows what county government is doing right now. You said there were three other Currently, three county commissioners. Right. Are all three of them up for election this time? No. Or, uh, and who are you basically running against? I'd be running against John Saunders. Okay. Right. Then every two years, you'd be, uh, Paul and John would run on, on a separate ballot. Okay. I will say this, though. I've, I've been, uh, I don't know what you would call me. Uh, my father put me on a street corner in 1988 with the Michael Dukakis sign. 
I caught the bug. I worked on Jim McGovern's first campaign as a volunteer in middle school. So I've been involved as campaign manager down to volunteer. Um, I love being involved. What I don't like being involved is a 11th hour, 12th hour negative campaign where you're sending the wrong message any candidate should, should have. So when it comes to this, I, I'm not running anything negative. I'm, I'm running on the issues. I'm running to reform county government. I'm not looking to get involved with any issues of anything negative. I can't say that more than enough. So unfortunately, if you're looking for a candidate to do that, I'm, I'm not your man. So uh, how, how does county government make its money? Where, where does it derive taxes from? The majority of taxes are from uh, your taxes. So if you look at your paycheck, there is a county form of uh, taxes. What usually is they'll go to the, the city or town treasurer and say, what's the net of the population? Which it should be if you have a thousand taxpayers and each pay a dollar, then you get a thousand dollars to county government. Is it but income tax based, property tax based? What's the? It's based on the amount of taxpayers in your town. So which is unfair, if they say only 800 people pay taxes of, of local uh, property tax, they would take 1,000 of the people that, are pay that should be paying their taxes. So it, it's primarily property tax? Property tax, yeah. So okay, so it's... Mm -hmm. it's They're not getting it from your income or anything like that. Mostly derives it from a, a more regressive form of taxation unlike state government. Right. But also we do generate money from the courts when the states want to rent that out. So we're in charge as landlords of the court buildings and the registered deeds also make a, bring in revenue. So it, it's based on property owners, mm -hmm. but... but the, the allocation or the portion that, that each city pays is based on like how many, so considering that no, New Bedford should, has a lot yeah. of uh, 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 renters, mm -hmm. so we're getting kind of... I would assume that because in fairness, they should be taking out a percentage of the overall taxes collected for each city and town. If this is the case, which I don't, I'm not saying that is, if they're saying, well, the majority of people that should be paying taxes, this is your bill every year, that I'm against because they should be taking a percentage of the tax dollars that actually come in for cities and towns. So. Some counties do run that way, that this, this, this is what you pay because that's the population of the town and city. So I've never looked at the budget outside what the overall budget is, but you got funding from the state, funding from the county tax, registered deeds, and court bill, uh, money from the courts. As someone who lived on uh, Cape for about 20 years, I'm familiar with the uh, st county structure there. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of services provided by the county, mm -hmm. um, including planning and you know research and advocacy does mm -hmm. the commission here provide any services of that sort because cape cod's also mother's vineyard nantucket it's all one big uh yep correct right from what i gathered from communication all i see is that's the main three responsibilities i would hope they would do have some form of planning for county involvement they did uh, do an implementation with the um Bristol county uh, fire Chiefs Association, where well, they wanted implemented programs for uh, rescue, safety and rescue. They did set aside funds. I don't know exactly what they implemented since 2003, 2014. But if you look, a lot of times there'll be uh, Bristol County uh, rescue equipment at area fire departments, city halls. I know Norton has a, a huge facility that's in the pocket line in case there's a tree that falls down or there's something, an issue of, of a flood. There's equipment throughout the whole county. So that was separately implemented back in 2013, 2014. But I had to do my research to really find that. <laughs> so it's like, the big thing is, I want to give county government the benefit of the doubt, just because, like I said, you see nothing and you wonder, okay, the court buildings are falling apart, what are they doing? Um, but at the same time, you want to have a form of government that's actually going to be effective for modern day. Thank All right, Rich, thank you again. Yeah. Thank you.